the latest World of Tanks console free tank and tank of the month has been released and will be released on Tuesday this week and today's video is of course looking at the T3485 M and this gameplay is genuinely one of the most ridiculous gameplays within World of Tanks because everything went perfectly now we didn't actually get the actual replay of it because I wasn't recording which was one of the most upsetting things about it but we did manage to go back and we're recording it in the replay system within World of Tanks but hopefully you guys can see the kind of strategy and the mentality behind the game itself and how we managed to pull off such an insane result coming top of the team even though uh, we were, well, top of the game, in fact, even though we were actually on the losing side. So I'll give you that little hint, and, uh, yeah, we'll showcase the gameplay and then look at a actual replay with everything, like, all in line. So if you're not interested in seeing this fantastic game, then you can skip ahead and see the uh, full replay of a different game that will be on the later half. But regardless of that, this game is just insane and this tank in general was just crazy it was in one of my like overpowered tank videos uh, for the low tiers which are of course this is tier 6 um, and this is because it has like 2400 dpm I think at tier 6 as a medium tank and you're dealing 180 damage per shot you're seeing me dealing dead damage to the tiger p here um, albeit in a, in a really bad replay system um, but you can see here we've locked down the tracks of the tiger p I can tell you that uh, and we're just farming this guy there's nothing he can do we reload in about three seconds um, and so we can just permanently track him and he gets taken out there by the t20 who basically farms off that last little bit of hit points that he did manage to have now this position on Erlenberg is fantastic at the beginning of the game especially if the enemy team are doing what they're doing right here which is just YOLOing in um, and just being silly. I also recommend where we just farm that Tiger P you can often get a lot of shots onto people from there because they tend to cross especially if they're the slow heavy tanks within the game they really don't have much opportunity to kind of get across safely um, especially if you get into a, an aggressive position and if you have light tanks on the team as well which are helping you out but regardless of that um, I think what we really have here in the T3485M is just the ability to just put out that damage it's like a perfect combination between having sufficient damage per shot so you're not dealing like 85 damage but you've also got such a great reload that you can retrack opponents before they actually uh, repair those tracks so it's kind of like the optimal setup in terms of how much damage you're dealing per shot uh, making it easy to kind of trade with the opponents but also being able to just farm like this tiger one here there's nothing he can do he's getting a slim peak of our turret which he could bounce off of uh, and luckily we're just hitting him every single time every time we're firing we're dealing damage to this tiger one and there's nothing he can really do we missed that shot which is unfortunate but it's just insane how much damage you can do and you see us hit him again there and this is just where the T3485M and all of these Russian uh, T34s including the T3488 all of the premium versions and this one uh, will be the HMH uh, T3485M that you'll be able to pick up for free as part of the monthly DLC uh, for March so this will be for free um, and essentially the operation I expect will just be uh, similar if you've completed the type 59-2 challenge uh, you'll be able to get the same this tank but with the skin version of it for the heavy metal heroes um, and that will basically be just be down to points uh, you can see here what we're seeing is the J Panther come yoloing in and this is the point in the battle where you're nine to four and it's looking absolutely horrendous but because the t3485m is not terrible it has a bit of mobility it has that alpha damage uh, we can just kind of swerve and go past the people that we don't need to bother with at this current moment in time and that allows us to pick up the kill on the J Panther. Now the KV-85 then subsequently decides to go after the J Panther on our team and we're just going to put a couple of rounds into his side reloading in 2.8 seconds I believe is the actual time and reload of this tank um, with the equipment which is of course the advanced loader and rapid loading etc um, and that's something that you want to be using yourself you can see the AMX 1375 here we make a misplay we actually miss which is really annoying we lost a, a lot more health than we probably needed to there which could potentially have helped us out or help us out um, as we kind of move forward with the game but 
regardless of that, we have done an, an, an enormous amount of damage, uh, to be honest with you. And you'll see that at the end of the game, uh, just how much damage we managed to do. But it is a one versus six scenario. It's looking like we're going to lose. We take one more shot against the Tiger, which is disappointing, uh, definitely, uh, because we could have definitely picked him up if we didn't bounce off of him. And that mean we would have kept some a little bit more health. And now we're in a position where we're one versus five. We know that there's a tank destroyer, which is the uh, Sturm Tiger. There's a KV-85 that we've just spotted there. We also know that there is a Cromwell Knight. And the other couple of tanks I don't think we've seen in the game, but we someone enters the cap circle, which means that they're probably on their way. What kind of tank can get in the cap circle and kind of progress fast? Well, it is going to be the Cromwell Knight. So we decide that we're going to go over this way and see if anyone's coming over, which they are. And the Cromwell Knight is. Unfortunately, he does manage to hit our engine and he does manage to hit us and pen, which is uh, a little bit disappointing, meaning that we are a complete one shot for everyone. And that being said, Stern Panzer decides to come in. Doesn't really do too much. And now we can kind of look over towards the KV-85 and we bounce and then he goes in the lake and we could have actually ended up taking out the Cromwell Knight there, which meant that the KV-85 was in the drink and we probably would have been able to take out both of them and then potentially would have been able to use view range to outperform our opponents. But that wasn't the case in this battle, which is very, very disappointing and we do get taken out. But let's have a look at just how good this battle was compared to everyone else in the game and of course the damage total of this tier 6 within the game. You'll see it coming up in just a second. Of course we had the defeat which was very disappointing but 4,961 damage, 6 kills, 1,774 base experience for a loss within World of Tanks console is insane that is genuinely one of the best games i think i've had in a long long time and it was down at tier six that would be a very good result in a tier eight tank let alone this tier six tank um albeit this tank has like ridiculous dpm for its tier and is a fantastic tank to actually play hence why i've actually three marked it in the first place um but yeah an insane result and you'll see the actual post game stats here in a second when we go through the menus uh, and end up on the log tab and then we'll get into the second gameplay which showcases how it kind of typically performs in a very like above average slash average game uh, but still a really good game itself you can see here 4,961 damage, 568 assistance, bringing the grand total all the way up to 5,500 uh, combined damage, which is, yeah, unheard of really for a tier 6, um, especially with the fact we were in a tier 7 game. Of course, no surprise, mastery badge for that performance, uh, top... <laughs> Top Gun, high calibre, and yeah, we came top of the game, even though we lost, and the Stern Panzer and the enemy team managed to pick up 3,400. That game, we may, well, we were close to doing more damage than the entire team combined, um, which, I mean, shouldn't really happen within the game, but there we go. Unfortunately, we get the loss, um, but we did try our hardest, and we could have played a little bit better in a couple of scenarios, maybe won the game, but yeah, that's really being very, very picky, and in those situations, it's very tense, uh, but regardless of that tense situation, Let's have a look at another one. The next gameplay in question is on Teepval Ridge. This is an interesting one. It's definitely one of my more favoured maps within the game, at least of the current ones that Wargaming have re-released into the game. It's one I've uh, kind of enjoyed throughout the time. It was one that was released when I believe they brought in the Centennial event, um, which marked uh, the beginning of World War um, one or the end of World War One, I, I think in 2018, um, maybe slightly earlier. Uh, but essentially, what it was is that they rang in the Mark One tank, um, and that was very, very uh, cool to see what they did with that. And you could basically play the very first tank ever created um, within like a small version of this map, and you'd go around and you'd have like. Yeah, it was, a, it was a really novel and interesting game mode uh, that they did have for us to play. Unfortunately, Wargaming don't tend to do that anymore. We just kind of have that really boring toy tank mode, and that's literally about all of the game modes that we have. Um, but regardless of that, let's get into what this game has and what the T3485 can offer you uh, in the majority of your games. 
we're taking kind of a, a little bit of a cautious approach. We are playing on our own, which is, you know, the typical Eclipse fashion. And unfortunately, the Ziska here decides that going through the center of the map and YOLOing someone is a good idea. Obviously, it's not particularly a great idea. We do take one shot in return, but we're going to take all of his hit points for <laughs> for, for the pleasure. Um, and yeah, we'll, uh, we'll definitely take that at the beginning of the game, taking up nearly a thousand damage. Um, and yeah, definitely a good one. Moving forward though, in the game, what can we do? Well, we need to support our team. Hopefully we can get one shot off into the AMD. Don't manage to do that, but you know, the extra like three seconds later, and <laughs> you can do the damage uh, straight away again. But yeah. 876 damage this early on two minutes in is not awful you can definitely do better with the t34 and that's because of that dpm that you do get um, not only do you get dpm but you also get view range so you can see here we've got fantastic view range for the tank itself which means that you can um, essentially uh, spot for your team as well and you can get a decent sizable chunk of assistance damage which can boost up your combined and therefore you can get up on your marks of excellence and that's the sort of thing that you'll be wanting to kind of focus on if you are trying to get three marks I've already got three marks so don't really have to sweat it out too much in this tank and unfortunately for the last game that we played and the last game that we showcased on the channel uh, in this uh, we didn't manage to get the victory but we did have the best damage game I think I've ever had um, which is disappointing that I wasn't recording the full gameplay um, but yeah definitely in this one kind of showcases what your average game looks like what you can do with the tank um, and what you shouldn't be doing and that is definitely just snapping shots with the tank because the accuracy or the dispersion of the tank is pretty bad to be honest with you with you uh, i think that the dispersion makes the tank a little bit annoying to play in some regards because you've got this horrible aim time which means that when you're trying to just flick on to someone or you're trying to like pinpoint accuracy um during those clutch situations sometimes it can be difficult and you have to kind of take that potential hit uh, to be able to deal with some damage. Um, one thing that you do want to do that I didn't do there was just angle your armor towards the opponent. Every kind of uh, opportunity that you can do, can't do it in that scenario. Well, we could have, um, but yeah, I was just probably being too lazy. But don't get lazy with this tank because uh, you can get punished in uh, if you don't angle. And often, because the armor is very well angled, if you angle again, you can actually bounce quite a few rounds. And that's something I've always uh, enjoyed about um, playing in this tank. You'll see me here loading the premium rounds. The premium rounds of this vehicle are disgusting and I mean literally disgusting because they just have such high penetration for a tier 6 that if you're coming up against tier 8s which you will do in this tank it isn't a preferential matchmaker or anything like that as so you will be playing up against those tier 8s um, it does mean that you can pen them and you can pen them reliably and because you've got the DPM you can pen them reliably and be ruining their days as well because even tier 7s have worse DPM than you and that's tier 7 mediums so I think that that's where the strong power of the 85mm on this tank really comes in clutch and where you can just plow rounds into the opponents and they don't have much that they can do against you um, unless of course they just have more hit points like a tiger or something where they've got literally double your hit points so I guess that they can trade with you in that regard but with this, you know, you've got the mobility, you've got the gun depression, uh, at least to a degree. I think you've got five degrees of gun depression with this thing, but you're fairly like, it's, it's not limiting gun depression because you're fairly small, uh, which means that you don't have that kind of horrendous um, <laughs> gun like handling in some scenarios. Yes, you will find it a little bit tedious in some points, uh, but for the most part, you will enjoy playing this tank, which I think is really, really crucial for you guys to understand. And if you have managed to kind of go through this operation and try out this free tank that is in the game, um, then I would recommend maybe testing it out. If you play them in platoons, these things are devastating for the enemy team. Um, just because, the, imagine three of you with 2400 DPM, um, yeah, that can be <laughs> utterly horrific for the enemy team. Um, and I've played it before. 
playing in the T34 85s with a couple of T34 88s which have slightly higher alpha I think they may even have 200 alpha on the T34 88 uh, whereas this one has 180 um, still very very good and still so so consistent and that's why I love this tank is because it is just so consistent and you're able to do things like this which is just plowing rounds consistently every like 3.6 seconds that you're seeing here into the opponents and taking up so many kills you're seeing us just racking up kills against everyone uh, that's trying to be aggressive in that cap circle and you can see here just kill after kill we're basically feeding from this game um, and what we're seeing here is just um, how good the DPM can be and just how quickly we can pick up the enemies within this game we're going to skip forward to the end of the game because we're just hunting down the artillery and I don't want to make this video too long um, but you can see here we do manage to find the artillery but we don't manage to get the final hit because our teammates decide that they're gonna cap because why not in the game I hate that literally one shot away from taking out the artillery and they decide to cap especially when it's a light tank like go and hunt down the artillery it's not going to be you know take too much of your brain power or anything like that but a fantastic result six kills 2000 or well, 3200 damage a little bit of assistance as well in there and we come top of the team 1861 base experience very good game for the tier six um, and this is not like a, an irregular game these are quite often uh, a game that you'll get in the t3485 i've had a lot of 3k plus games i've had a few 4k plus but earlier today the 4.9k damage game was the best one i think i've ever had in this tank and probably one of the better games that i've had tier for tier in world of tanks in general so i hope you enjoyed this video of course this is coming free for you tomorrow as of the recording of this video as part of the monthly tank for free event that you can complete as part of the points where you earn points and you get this tank for free so hopefully you did enjoy and of course make sure to like and subscribe and check out some of the other videos on screen right now hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and a fantastic rest of your week and i hope to see you in another one goodbye